Today, I'll be turning my attention from printing in place propulsion to printing in place pumping. Well, I set myself a new objective. I'm trying to design an impeller pump that I can wholly 3D print in a single piece. I'll be releasing this as a two-part mini-series. In this video, I'll be focusing on designing and testing a whole range of different impeller designs for the print-in-place pump to see how much water they can pump at different heights, as well as the max pumping height for each impeller design. Some really surprising results, all powered by an electric drill. If you want to have a go yourself, I'll be making the design files used in this video available for free by my Patreon channel. You can find a link to my Patreon channel on my YouTube channel. All you have to do is join my free Patreon tier. I've got a cunning idea for removing the need for base plate supports in the final design. But for now, what's really important to test is that I can print the impellers in the orientation I'm going to use in the print in place version without the need for any supports for the veins. Great, no dramas there. Let's look at each of the impellers I'll be testing. In blue, we've got a simple straight vein impeller that has 10 veins. For the red impellers, I've added angled tips to the simple 10 vein design to give a combined axial and radial impeller. In red and white, I've swapped the direction of the blade tips. Let's see what impact that has. For the orange impellers, I've reduced the number of veins down to six with the same tip design used in the red design. The orange and white is the same as the orange with the axial tips reversed. Onto the yellow impellers, these have six involute veins rather than straight veins. The yellow and white has the involutes on the opposite direction. I'll need some bearings to keep the impeller spinning in check and a casing that amplifies the impeller pumping properties. I've split the casing in two for now to let me test different impellers without having to print out the entire new pump each time. As part of the print, I'm also going to test how easy it is to incorporate the large bearings into the casing during the print. So after adding a pause to the print, I'll drop in the bearing. There you go. Here is the finished casing. You can see how the outer chamber in the casing gets smaller as you go away from the outlet, which is a common efficiency feature in impeller pumps. Just at the top, and there we have a finished pump casing. To improve the waterproofness of the casing, I'm going to try and coat it in a clear lacquer as a slightly less messy alternative to epoxy. Let's see how that holds up. Can it actually generate any suction? Let's put the inlet pipe on here. To test this, I even got a suction hose with a one-way valve to give me at least a chance of this working. For me to test this, I'm going to first need to prime the pump by filling it and the suction hose with water before I start it up. Oh dear, that's a lot of water coming out. Go on, you can do it. Nope, that's it. It's just too much air getting in. Hmm. Okay, let's move the suction head and see how it does then. Now that's what I call a pump. One meter. Yep, one meter ahead. All right, that's enough messing around. Let's start to do some measuring. I'm gonna start by measuring the zero meter height gain for each of the impellers, where the inlet of the pump and the outlet of the hose are at the same height. And we're gonna see how long it takes to pump a liter of water into this bowl, which is on top of the scales. The race is on, let's go. First up, the orange impeller. Wow, it's pretty fast. Only 10 seconds for a litre. Next up, the red impeller. Can it beat the orange one? Oh, not quite. 11 seconds. Next up, the blue impeller with the straight veins. Let's see how that compares. Oh, that's a lot slower. 17.1 seconds for a litre. Next, we have the curved vein impeller in yellow. Oh, it's slower than the orange and the red but 15.3 seconds, it's quicker than the blue. Right now, let's look at the yellow with white propeller with the veins in the opposite direction. Oh, that's pretty much the same as the, the yellow, which is, to be honest, a bit surprising. Next, the orange with white with the inverse tips. 12.2 seconds, that's pretty good. Now, red and white with the inverse tips. Again, pretty fast. Ooh, 13 seconds. So at the top of the leaderboard with 10 seconds to pump a litre, it's orange. And right at the bottom of the table, we've got blue with 10 straight veins. If you're enjoying the video so far, then don't forget to subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Let's move on to the next test. Now I'm going to increase the height between the inlet and the outlet of the pump to one metre. And again, see how long it takes to fill up a litre inside the bowl. Okay, let's take it from the top. Orange propeller first. 
Well, that's still pretty quick. 14 seconds. Nice. Red's up next. Seems to be similar. Oh, wow. It's actually faster. 12.9 seconds. Blue impellers next. Oh, dear. That's a fail. Doesn't look like it can even pump a meter. How about the yellow impeller? Nope, same problem. Not even a meter. Well, that really is surprising. Okay, how about if we switch the direction of the curved veins? Okay, it's working. It's obviously slower than the red and the orange, but 23.9 seconds. Well, there we go. Okay, how about if we reverse the tip on the orange impeller? Okay, well, it's working again, which is good. Still quite slow. Wow, it's exactly the same as the yellow and white. Okay, lastly, the red impeller with the reverse tips. Wow, it's pumping, but it's really slow. 26 seconds. Let's compare the flow rate on each of the pellers as we go from zero meters ahead to one meters ahead. Okay, so immediately you can see that the six veins with the reverse involute climbs up the rankings. Secondly, you can see at the top of the table, the order between the orange and the red impellers switches meaning that the adding more veins can increase their pressure inside of the pump. Okay, now I'm gonna turn my attention from looking at how much volume of water can be pumped to actually just finding the maximum pumping height that we can get from each impeller by just moving the hose gradually higher until the flow stops. As you can see, there's quite a difference in height between the impellers, which is really interesting. Okay, last one. Okay, let's see how the different impellers stack up. So right at the bottom of the table, we've got yellow with 0.6 meters, then blue with 0.7 meters, then orange white with one meter, yeah, uh, orange a little bit higher with one meter, then 1.2 meters for the reverse tip red impeller, and way out in front, at a tie is red and yellow white. So that's the 10 vein with tips and six veins with reverse involutes. Now, please explain to me why the reverse involutes seem to be doing so well. Pop a comment below. I'll be really interested to hear if anybody's got any ideas. Okay, so I've got one more thing I'd like to try before we try and do the print in place pump. And that's try and reduce the amount of leakage out the back of the pump through the bearings. Now I'm gonna do that by adding silicon grease. Here I wanna place a whole load of silicon grease in between the bearings and also add an o-ring between the bearings to try and reduce the ability for water to escape. And while I'm at it, I might as well also grease the o-ring that sits between the lid and the main case. See if that'll help at all. Silicon grease is great because it's fairly inert, so it's compatible with most 3D printing plastic. Okay, there we go. Let's see if this enables it to have any form of suction head at all. A lot of leaking around the big one, not so much around the top bit. Okay, okay. Oh dear. Possibly less leaking out of the back of the pump, but the seal. That's the problem. In the next video, I'll try printing the pump in a single piece and compare its pumping prowess. See you next time. Bye for now.